All right, what's going on, fam? Welcome back to live number four. So very excited for today. Let's hop straight into it. All right, so today we are going over the differences between the greatest of all time boots and boots that are game boots. So that's the two. That's those are the two categories we're looking at today. Uh, Dragon Dart Sloth, welcome. Hello, hello. I'm on my way back from a soccer match, and in the match on the last play, I was pressing and got rocketed in my face. Yikes, dude. But hey, we won. Love to hear that. Good to see you, man. IDK says. You should review the Pantafola Doro Super Legera 2.0. That's an interesting one. I will have to write that down somewhere. I got a pen, paper. Penguin says hello. What's up, Penguin? Michael Wilson. Hey, Noah. What's up, dude? Good to see you. Good to see you. It is almost Monday, which means I want to hear how your uh, how your training went or how your ID camp went. Very much looking forward to it. Curtis Hayes. What's happening, Noah? Not too much, man. Ready to talk about the greatest of all time football boots. That's what's up. Good to see you all. Thank you all for joining. Okay, so Andre says, hey, Noah, what's up? Good to see you here. Poet Anderson, it's 6.02 starting late. Well, yeah, man, it's my channel. So if I want to start two minutes late, I can start two minutes late. You know what I mean? At least we're here. At least we're here. I've got a really cool, uh, I got a little presentation for you guys that we want to jump in, but I've got a box or a bag of boots that I've been wearing a bunch. Here's one beautiful, look at that. Been torching her recently. Custom, you guys have probably seen these in a recent reel on Instagram. Uh, let's see, what else? What's popping in the chat? This is the talk I've been waiting for, yes. Trick shot guys, yo, what's up big fan? Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. All right. Let's just hop straight into the video. So again, as we're as I said before, we are going to be talking about the uh, goat boots. So I'm actually going to pop back. So goat boot versus game boot. Obviously, this is the thumbnail of the actual video. Um, and what I wanted to talk today, I, this got brought up by a subscriber who basically was saying, oh, hey, what's the difference between a game boot and a goat boot. Is a goat boot always a game boot? Is it a boot that you potentially wouldn't wear in a game? Is a game boot something that isn't a goat boot just because it's practical and because it has a good use case? Um, that's kind of the thing we're looking at today. So what I want to do really quick, proper cleats, boot society represent. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Uh, and feel free to leave your questions down in the comment section below. Obviously, I will see everything and I'll be able to pop them up. I'm going to start rolling through this little presentation that I have for you guys today uh, about kind of my thoughts around what a goat boot is versus what a game boot is. And if you want to get uh, my attention, you can super chat. Otherwise, I'll kind of take short breaks throughout. I can't guarantee I'll get to everyone's questions, um, but we'll, I'll do my best. And then at, if you guys want, I have released a training program, as you guys know from the last one. We're, we talked a lot about habits in the last live, and one of them is working on your gym routine. So I've got phases one through four of my gym routine up on uh, my website, noahcavanaugh.com slash shop. I will do that in the comments right now. Um, slash shop. You can go and visit that and uh, grab one of those phase one through four. That would be very much appreciated. Okay, let's hop into the goat boost versus game boot. So I've got a bunch of stuff down below in this massive, let's see if I can bring this up on camera actually. So this is what I take to training. Let me know if you have something like this. <laughs> These are all the boots that I'm currently testing right now. Um, and or currently I have like in somewhat of a rotation. Uh, so that is literally a duffel bag worth of football boots. So what I want to talk about, we're going to define our terms first, okay? So a goat boot, and I love this little, like, see where it says goat on the screen, and then it says this little, like, non-glyph thing? For whatever reason, the program that I use, Canva, doesn't allow you to put emojis there, which is super weird. I don't know what's going on. So goat boot stands for greatest of all time. Now, for me, I don't think there's one particular goat boot. There's one for me. There's a boot that I love over every other boot on in the world, on the market. 
uh, which we'll get into later. You guys all probably know what it is already at this point. But greatest of all time for me is like a list of five to 10 boots that are just so, so, so good. And there's two different definitions that we can go for, right? So one of the definitions of the goat boot is a football boot that has a rich history and a broad cult following and have made a substantial impact on the boot industry. So that's the first, that's like, that's a greatest football boot of all time. It's something that made a huge impact. It made a huge splash. It influenced boots from that, you know, for years and years and years into the future. So we can talk about some, some boots might come up in this discussion that have, you know, from the, the start of the knit boot, right? So like Magista Obra, Superfly 4 type vibe, that could be considered a goat boot because it made such a huge impact on the industry, right? So the other thing we can talk about is, or a goat boot could be defined as a football boot that fits your foot and makes you feel some type of way about yourself. A boot that gives you a little bit of swagger. And then again, Canva with the absolute dub. Look at this little smiley face. I It's supposed to be one of, uh, let's see if I can put it in the chat. It's supposed to be one of these emojis, but there you go. It's supposed to be one of those emojis, but unfortunately, um, yeah, it just, uh, yeah, I don't know. One of those things. So that's a goat boot, right? So you got two big definitions. One being rich history, broad cult following, made a massive splash in the boot industry, as well as a personal goat boot can kind of be one that really does just make you feel some type of way about yourself, about the way you play. You put it on and you're like, wow, this is something special. Okay. So the second definition that we have to go through is a game boot. Now, a game boot is a football boot that feels right when you wear it, performs to the standard that you need slash want during a match, and functions properly for what you need and want, right? So the performance of the boot is really good, but then just from a functional standpoint, that is where we're going on this one. So that's kind of the first definition of a match boot. A match boot is just something you know it's going to perform. Or a football boot that gives you confidence that you can perform to the best of your abilities without worrying about what's on your feet. A lot of times when, and I I feel this even as somebody who is trying to break in often a lot of different football boots at one time, sometimes I'll slip into a pair of football boots and I'm just like, man, I'm, I gotta, I'm kind of worrying about what's on my feet right now. Um, You know, things are maybe not, they don't feel right. I have to break them in the, the side of it hurts, like whatever right? Whatever, whatever your thing is. Um, for me, something that makes you really, really, really confident on the ball and something that you can just kind of forget about, but it gives you all of the performance of what a game boot is. That for me is a fantastic, fantastic game boot. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at, and this is just an example, right? I'll, I'll kind of, maybe I'll go through every single one of these in this list. But you have the goat boots, which are in one half of that Venn diagram. You have the game boots, and then there's some crossover. So for me, I'm just going to say it right away. My goat boot, which I've got a couple different pairs of um, up in my closet, Hyper Venom Phantom 3 Low. In fact, I might actually have the all white ones somewhere in here. Aha. So I know a couple weeks ago I showed you guys, or last week maybe, I showed you guys the uh, FG version. This is the AG version of that same colorway. So this has the AG sole plate on it. Obviously the Chrome has kind of come off now um, and they're a little bit beat up. I wore them a lot on the off season. And uh, yeah, but these are amazing. This is from, I think the, either the World Cup or the Euro colorway starting to split a little bit here on the outside. But um, this is my favorite boot of all time. The reason being is because it fits my foot absolutely perfectly. There is no way around that Hypervenom Phantom 3 for me is a goat boot and a game boot. And I, there is no one who can tell me otherwise, because that is, for me, that is like the best boot of all time. Now, we can go and define some of these other ones, right? So the one of the ones that I did actually want to bring up that was in the thumbnail is the Morelia 2 made in Japan. That's this boot right here. So the Morelia 2 made in Japan is one of the most comfortable plush kangaroo leather uppers I have ever experienced on like this is this is crazy crazy soft I haven't worn them in a couple days because I've been um, we had a game last night and we had we've had training sessions I wore like hyper venom threes for the game hyper venom threes the day before 
And then what did I wear before that? GXs, I think. Anyway, but yeah, absolutely fantastic boot. For me, because of the heritage, so we go back to, let's go back a couple slides. So we go to the greatest boot of all time, a football boot that has rich history, this one, broad cult following, I would argue this one, and has made a substantial impact on the boot industry. Maybe not so much, just because this is very much a, 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 a basic construction compared to what a lot of modern boots feel like and look like. But this is definitely a boot, in my opinion, with a broad cult following. It might be a little niche, but for me, this is a goat football boot, but it's not a game football boot. For me, I can train in these. I can, you know, eventually, yes, it may be a game boot. And here's what we'll talk about as well, too. It can be a game boot, but not for a little while. Okay, so the first part of me, my brain goes to, if I'm going to define a boot, I'm going to put it in one of two categories. First, like what's my first impression? And then it'll come either across into the middle of that Venn diagram or it'll stay on one side, right? So this for me is simply a goat football boot. This is a fantastic football boot in almost every way. It's just something that I am going to choose not to wear in a game. So it's not a game boot for me, right? Now let's move on to something like a GX. So... No, you already know what my goat football boot is and my game boot for me too. So I know that Dragon Dart Sloth's favorite football boot is the GX. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is your favorite. And I think it's what you wear for a game too. And for that reason, uh, and, and I would put this in this category, this for me is a game boot first. So my first impression is, wow, this boot is performs really well. The knit is amazing. This grit knit is fantastic. It's got a nice sole plate. I wish it was a little more responsive, but it's really aggressive from a traction perspective, which is awesome. It fits really well. It performs really well. So it's a game boot for me. Has it been out long enough to become a goat football boot? You tell me, how long does a football boot have to be out for you to argue for real, for real? And it's not just new tech that this is a goat football boot. Because for me, this fits my foot almost perfectly it's it's between this the 99 leather and the hyper venom 3 for games no matter what i don't wear anything else during games so for me this is a game boot as well this falls somewhere in the middle okay so that's the gx let's go through a couple of these questions um and then we'll get back to this game boot versus goat boot situation but what i do want to know is what are your goat boots what are your goat boots Okay. When's the A6 DS Lite X55 versus Mizuno Morelia Neo 3 Japan review coming out? Big fan of the channel. Awesome. Thank you. So right here I have um, the Made in Japan Mizuno Morelia. As you can see, I have worn them, but not that much. The reason is because they are not breaking in very well. For whatever reason, the Alpha and this boot just don't fit my foot that well. Um, and it's one of those things where I have to figure out how I'm going to break this in, that comparison review won't come out unless the one month review of this comes out. Does that make sense? So I'm not just going to do a comparison just for the sake of comparison. Similar to the 99, if you guys check out my Instagram at noah.cavanaugh, which is the little thing in the corner right there. Um, I had a story up that today to go over. I wanted you guys to vote on which of the thumbnails, but I'm releasing a video this next week that's going to be the 99 leather x speed portal actually i think i have these oh yeah they're right here oh i'm doing a comparison review between these two right so the, both of these boots are absolutely sensational for some people this is actually the original version of this boot is the goat boot for me this is one of the best performing football boots i've ever tried on my feet um from a from a reactionary from a lockdown from all that perspective so i'm doing a comparison between the two but the reason that i may not do a comparison on the DS Lite XY5 and these is because these just don't fit my foot and I don't feel comfortable doing a comparison with a boot that I haven't actually checked out. So, and I haven't actually broken in. So you guys have to understand like, if I'm gonna provide that information and I'm gonna really compare them, we can talk about specs all day long, but that's kind of what the initial reviews are for. The initial reviews are for, hey, here's the tech specs. Here's how it compares to the other things around it in the market. With the one month review, you guys will see in the DS Lite XFly 5 one month review, if I can speak English, one month review, you guys will see comparisons to the Made in Japan Mizuno Morelia Neo 3. But 
if that one, the Morelia Neo 3 doesn't get a one month review, I won't do a like full blown comparison video because I just don't have the experience in both of them, if that makes sense. And I want to be fair to fair to that. Um, okay. Here in Brazil, the A6 DS Lite XFly, both four and five, are cheaper than all Nike Pro and Addy Point 2 models. I'm so hot. Dude, that is insane. I am, I would say that the DS Lite XFly series is cheaper than most other like top end boots here. It's not cheaper than the Point 2 models, unfortunately. But here in America, you can get, a, I get all mine on eBay. And yo, they are crazy crazy good football boots but that is amazing that they're that inexpensive in brazil that's so cool um put anderson says let's be honest copa mundial and the r9 mercs are the true goat boots everything else has uh has been a refinement of those two boots um i suppose so although i disagree because if you were to say copa mundial that's your leather the R9 was the synthetic leather or synthetic material. So then you have to say, what was the first, maybe the Lotto Zero Gravity, the original one. So the laceless. So again, we when I talk about goat boots, I'm thinking about boots that are, that are trend setting. So yes, it was before its time, but like the laceless Lotto boots started the idea about, woo, could we do football boots without laces? The knit boots come in 2014. So those... I would consider goat boots. For me, Magista Obra and Superfly 4 are goat boots because they started a trend that we still see today. I mean, a lot of boots today are now knit or derivatives of knit. So I would I would say yes and for this. But yeah, that's fair enough. Um, Andrew Palmer, welcome. Good to see you. Whoa, what a chart. Yeah, man, doing my best. Trying to trying to provide some trying to provide some cool. Uh, cool concepts, cool content. Um, let's go over. Um, ooh, really quick. I think we need to talk specifically about colorways and how those can make it into a goat boot. Okay, colorways. Got it. Color way equals goat. Okay, I'll write that down. Let's see. We're getting some good ones. Okay, let's go back to this game boot versus goat boot chart. So for me, right this second, right this second, wow, so many people in the comments. Love this. Great to see you all. Okay, so for me, goat boot is the, uh, see top of the goat boot pyramid right here. I don't think you can see my cursor, unfortunately, but the uh, Hypervenom 3 made in Montebalunas. I actually have those. Let me grab them. Okay, these ones. So see at the top of the goat boot chart. So these, in my opinion, are a goat football boot. This is a pair of football boots that is made in Montebaluna with the Hypervenom Phantom 3, which is my favorite, shape, sole plate, knit, all that stuff. And then it's got Allegria leather over the top of it, which is the most plush and beautiful leather pretty much in existence other than made in Japan quality leather. These are a goat boot for me. Um, they may become a game boot at some point, but I only have one pair and they're extraordinarily expensive. So for me, they're going to stay in the goat boot category. So, and, and we'll talk about some other um, boots on this list that are not in this photo. I just took all the ones that I could find good thumbnail photos of and put them in this list. Magista Obra, let's go through, oh, let's go game boot actually, since I have it right here. We talked about this one before. This is a game boot for me. This is the Adidas X99 point leather speed portal. So it's got the speed portal with the carbon, oop, cover my face, speed portal with the carbon on the bottom. Excuse the uh, nasty shit right there. Uh, this has the construction from, oh, let's see if you can see it on there. There you go. Um, so from here all the way back is the same as the 99 gram boot that Adidas produced back in 2015, I believe, 14 or 15. And then you've got a beautiful cat, uh, kangaroo leather upper that's super plush and nice. The shape of this boot is absolutely fantastic. The lockdown with this crazy thin mesh here, which I think we'll see a little bit of in the new Speed Sense boots, which I'm very excited to get my hands on. Or Speed Sense. What am I talking about? Um, crazy Fast Speed Sense. Crazy Fast. 
Uh, this is going to be, I think, pretty similar to what the crazy fast is. But the lockdown and the sensation that I get, maybe it's just a, maybe it's just the bloody, um, just the feeling that I get in the shape of this boot. But it is unbelievable. It is genuinely unbelievable. So for me, this is uh, this is definitely a game boot. Does it go into goat category? I, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. And hear me out. So I don't think it does. And that's because that this football boot, number one, isn't old enough really to do anything like from a from a heritage standpoint. But the second piece of that is that this boot is just a amalgamation or a Frankenstein of a bunch of really, really good attributes. So the carbon sole, the 99 leather responsive upper, nice heel area, kangaroo, soft kangaroo leather in the forefoot, right? It does nothing that hasn't been done before. So I don't think it goes into the goat boot category, despite it being an absolutely sensational football boot. Okay. So that stays in the game boot category. We've also, we've already talked about GX. So that's beautiful. So go back to this big chart. So we'll go back to the GX. So that blue GX that's on there, it's right here. So this GX, maybe for some of you, it's a goat boot, but for me, it hasn't been out long enough to really like wow, is this, does this boot stack up to the rest of the Phantom series, right? Like we have Phantoms like this that exist that in my opinion are superior in some ways than this one. So does this t stand the test of time? Is it going to be better than Phantom, you know, Phantom Venom, Phantom Vision, Phantom Hyper Venom or Hyper Venom Phantom 2, Hyper Venom Phantom 1? Like, is it better than those? Might that, that might be a personal preference. I think though, Grip Knit, is a new, yes, it's just a derivative of the knit technology, but I would argue that this is going to be a, a thing we'll see. We see it on the Phantom Luna, which is coming out or has come out, I guess it'll come out in a couple weeks, like officially. And I think we're going to see grip knit becoming a pretty big mainstay in at least the Nike system, right? So that is, that is on there. Okay. Let's jump back really quick into the comments. So we're going to talk about colorways in a little bit. Gustavo Nunez says 2014 F50 Audi Zeros. That's a great shout. I have the remakes of those. Never had the original version because I thought they were going to be too thin at the time. But they the upper feels amazing, especially on that Carbotex insert. Okay, EV16. Do you think nostalgia plays a big role in determining the GOAT status of a boot? My personal GOAT boot is the Vapor 11 Elite. Nice. Vapor 11 is a definitely a boot that a lot of people like. Um, yeah, a lot of people love that football boot. Yes, I think nostalgia, especially for the second definition. So if we go back to our little, our definition chart, right? So a goat boot, and I'll, uh, I'll put you back on the screen in just a sec, but a goat boot, remember that second definition, a football boot that fits your foot and makes you feel some type of way about yourself, a boot that gives you swagger. And you're going to remember that, right? You're going to remember the swagger that you feel in a certain type of boot. And so I think it does play a part, especially if you're making your own goat football boot list. But if we're talking like the first definition, rich history, broad cult following, substantial impact on the boot industry, that's probably a list of like three or four football boots, period. So for me, that's why I added the second one, because I think for a lot of people, especially you, you all who are younger than, say, you know, 16, 17 years old, you guys haven't even... You, you guys wouldn't have even tried some of the boots that I'm going to mention in this list just because and, and sort of um, what Poet Anderson was saying earlier about the R9 Vapor and some of these other like the Copa Mundial, like these boots that are genuinely trend setting. I think that's where, you know, you have to you have to kind of come back and say, OK, true goat football boot. If we're looking at like overall, that's uh, that's the vibe. So, again, if we're talking nostalgia, definitely nostalgia. Okay, uh, let's see. Prop cleats. I think it's all about how the boot measures in the generations after on how long it takes to reach goat boot status. Hypervenom 1 took a couple of years to reach goat status. Yeah, that's a great one. In fact, I have Hypervenom 1 right here. So that is exactly what I was saying. This is a fantastic, this is a great, so Prop cleats, thank you for bringing this up. So that's what I mean by um, when I was talking about Phantom GX, right? So Phantom GX is a great example of that because it's really good. And a lot of people love this football boot, myself included. I really love it. But in 
two or three iterations of, you know, the GX1, the GX2, maybe a new generation of GX with grip knit technology. Are we going to see a boot that absolutely smashes this boot out of the park? Are they going to make the sole plate a little bit more responsive? Are they going to do things to the stud pattern? Are they going to make the knit even better, the shape even better? We don't know. And so for that, I don't think we can consider this boot yet. Yet is always the question. But for me, Hypervenom Phantom 1 is a goat in my opinion. Hypervenom Phantom 3 is my greatest of all time, period. It's just because that's the boot that fits my foot perfectly, no matter what. And I think you could make an argument for a lot of boots in that. So yes, I think you're right. So you have to, it, the boot matures as the generations after it come out and, and do their thing. And I think then it takes time. So we can't, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of these boots that have come out in the last two, three, four years, we can't really say if they're goats yet, just because they they haven't stood the test of time, you know, and and been compared to things that are that haven't even existed yet. Phantom Ultra Venom, yes. Uh, since we're on the topic, I have both with me: Phantom Ultra Venom and Phantom. Oh, this isn't a Phantom. This is Flyknit Ultra. Flyknit Ultra, Phantom Ultra. Which of these two boots do you guys prefer? Both of these have been worn. You guys can see very much. They're black, so they don't beat up very much, but you can see a little crap on the studs. And then these ones have been absolutely shredded. I've shown you guys the uh, lack of chrome on the sole plate now, and these have been worn and enjoyed. Both of these are sensational football boots, sensational football boots. And in my opinion, these are... Well, you guys will see the video coming out soon. These are both on, this is uh, considered, in my opinion, like the ultra series from Nike. These are both on my goat list. And that's just because I think the technology, the way that they've, the, the knit on those two boots, if you haven't actually held them in hand is, is pretty, pretty sensational. So for me, that's a, that's goat status right there. Um, wow. We are blowing up in the comments. Awesome. Okay. Uh, chat, Tiempo Legend 9 or Copa Pure? Again, I don't, honestly, I don't think either of those make the GOAT list right now. I think there are plenty of Tiempos that are better than Tiempo 9. And I think Copa Pure is very good. It's it's good. It's a good concept. But again, I don't think it's st it stood the test of time. And I think Copa, a Copa Mundial, which is like the first iteration of Copa Pure, which is now, you know, how, God knows how many generations now. The Copa Mundial wins over because it's been a classic and it's been around for so long. New Balance 442 Pro, amazing k leather boot thoughts. So this is an interesting one. Um, H2O, I appreciate you bringing this one up. So I would say that this, if we go five, 10 years down the road and this boot, and, and there's nothing in that $150 price range, like that kind of middle ground between second tier boots at the $100, $120 price range and top tier boots at the $200 and $220 price range. If we're getting... A New Balance 442 Pro at $140, $150, usually you can get them on discount for like $130, and they're that good K-leather quality. Does that, is that the budget friendly? Because this is the boot, this football, oop, here we go, right there. This football boot is the football boot that I recommend to most people who are on a budget because it's stupid comfortable. It fits basically everyone. It's got decent performance. The stud pattern is a little lackluster, but for a boot that's $130, you're really not going to get much better than that unless you were to buy something on eBay from, you know, five years ago or whatever, that's a top end boot. And then you're worried about durability issues, right? So for me, potentially, but I don't think it's been around long enough to actually like make a, a, a real difference yet. Uh, Andre says Tiempo Legend 4. That's a great shout, especially Tiempo Legend 4 Elite. Those were sick. Those were sick with the fly wire inside the leather. That was banana. I always wanted to pay. I, like those are, that's a pair of football boots that I have been trying to find, but they're dumb expensive. Um, okay. Michael Wilson, have you gotten your hands on the X crazy fast yet? No. Uh, however, they are coming very soon. I just got shipping confirmation about them. So hopefully they'll be here this week and I can review them and get that review out super, super quickly. Um, and then I can start testing because they look like they'll fit for most people. Um, average bean says Tiempo legend four for me is goat and just best boot ever. Yeah. I mean, you and Andre both, I think that's a, that's a fantastic shout. Penguin says 
would you say the Adidas Copa Pure Point One is a goat boot or a game boot? Uh, for me personally, it's a game boot. I haven't worn it in like a game game yet, but I worn them. I've worn them in enough training sessions to know that I would absolutely wear them in a game. They are definitely a game boot for me. They are not a goat boot yet. I don't know if they'll ever be a goat boot. I don't think they'll be a goat boot, but they're a game boot for sure. And obviously, as we're talking about goat boots versus game boots and the difference between the two, there are a lot of football boots that aren't going to be in this either of these lists, either three, right? They're not going to be a goat. They're not going to be a game and they're not going to be, and they're not going to be somewhere in the middle. They're going to be like, not even, not even close to this. Right. So for me, that's sort of uh, yeah, it's one of those things. Okay. Let's go back into the presentation. Talk about some of these other ones. Okay. So we've gone over, Oh, uh, Tiempo legend five. I have them over here. Not super prepared with these ones. Okay. Tiempo Legend 5 Elite. That's that photo. Uh, you can see the photo on the left-hand side of that goat boot. These for me are a uh, goat boot because of the nostalgia. And the nostalgia for me about this boot, the shape, the fit, the feeling that just like that the class that it gave me. For me, this is why this football boot is so incredible. And yes, okay, I get it. For those of you who said Tiempo Legend 4, especially the Elite model, I reckon... So I had the Tiempo Legend 4, the regular one, but I thought the Legend f uh, 4 Elite was just going to be absolutely sensational. I'm sure I would love those football boots, but because I never tried those, these for me have a better shape on my foot than the Tiempo Legend 4, and they had this amazing... Like, it's just a full kangaroo leather upper... It's so soft here. Let me get this bloody thing out of the way. It's so soft. It's so plush. That hydrophobic mesh on the inside. Uh, there you go. You can kind of see it. Um, which you can't. There you go. That like hexagonal pattern. Like this football boot is just freaking awesome. And I love it. And that is why it's a goat boot. Is it a game boot? It never was. Because I wore other things during this time. But I still think this is a goat football boot. Let me know if you agree with that. Uh, okay. So we talked about phantom ultra that's at the bottom, or yeah, phantom ultra venom. That's the orange ones are on the bottom of that goat boot list. For me, this is a goat boot and I have worn these in games. So this is, this is a boot that falls right in the middle of that. They're a fantastic pair of fitting football boots. They're great for all foot shapes. In my opinion, they, they'll probably be a little bit too wide for like really thin feet. Um, but the, uh, the shape of this football boot and the fact that it's on the Hyperventum Phantom 3 sole plate is just an absolute game changer for me. And I love this football boot. I've got this pair. I've got another brand new pair of the pink and another brand new pair of the orange. So that's, they're just, they're going to be in my collection forever and ever and ever because I love them. Right. So that's a goat boot and a game boot. Last one on, or last two, I guess, on this list. So Furon is right in the middle there with the black and gold. Furon was a game boot for me. Last year, I wore it for one match. And I would say that the Furon V7 Pro is absolutely a game boot. It is fantastic. It fits really well. They've got a wide variant and a regular variant. And for me, that is absolutely a game boot. Is it a goat boot? No. The reason for that is because if you think about the attributes, Chevron studs, knit material, low profile, barefoot sensation, all of those could describe Vapor 13 as well. I think Vapor 13 is a better football boot than Furon V7, even if V7 fits my foot better. Does that make sense? So for me, it's a game boot for sure. It's not a goat football boot. The last one in this little list, and then we'll get back to some of your questions, and then we'll talk uh, about some of the boots that are in this bag as well, is at the bottom of that game boot, and it is the A6 DS Lite X Fly 5. These are absolutely game boots. I've worn them in training games. I've worn them in training sessions. I've worn them beating the crap out of the fours and the fives. Is it a goat boot? It might be for me just because it is. By the way, this is not lemonade. This is liquid IV rehydrating in like a liter and a half of water. Hydrate or dihydrate, folks. A6 DS Lite X55. Amazing football boot. Lightweight, good build quality, uh, fantastic stud pattern, all that stuff. That might be a goat for me just because it is, it fits better than the Mizuno Morelia Neo 3 betas and, and regular non-beta version. Um, yeah. So that's kind of where we're at. 
Okay, excuse me. Wow. So that is it for the uh, little presentation. Let's get to some of the questions. Again, as I said before, you guys can super chat if you really want your question answered like ASAP Rocky. Um, but I'm going to go through a few other ones that I had. So Goat Boot. What actually I want to change this to what is your top five goat boot list? Boom. Okay. I want you to put down in the comment section below. We're going to start reading them. What are your goat boots? What are your goat boots? Top five. Ready, set, go. And I'm going to take another drink of water because my... I'm parched. Okay. Um, Tampa Legend 9 seems to have too much padding for some people, although I'm also told Copa Pure doesn't have that leather like since leather sensation like it. Doesn't have I think what you're trying to, okay, Copa, so Legend 9 has a lot of padding. It does. I don't, that's the reason why the, um, that's the reason why these, the Montebalunas for me are way better in my opinion, because they basically did a padding delete right here. Um, they still have the padding on the instep, which is totally fine because it adds like a really nice cushioning sensation when you pass the ball. But for me, the, that's why the Montebaluna is way better than the regular one, just because it, I don't like how much padding's on it. The Copa. Oh, the Copa Pure, this one, is a really great football boot. It's got much less padding because it's just a really nice soft upper. And it's got a really nice seamless sensation throughout the entire, uh, the entire boot. And for me, I would say I'm picking – I've answered this question a couple times, but I would say um, Copa Pure, it goes – Tiempo Montebaluna at the top of the, we're talking like of those two series, Montebaluna, Copa Pure Point One, Tiempo Legend Nine Elite, regular, and then Copa Pure Plus. That's kind of my hierarchy of those two like full models. Morelia 2 or Morelia 3? Well, Morelia 3 doesn't exist. If you're talking about Morelia Neo 3, so Morelia 2, where the hell did the other one go? What the? Oh, here. Morelia 2, Morelia Neo 3. I'm picking this one. And I think this is goat status over this one. But a lot of people probably are going to pick this one instead because of the way it performs, the way it fits, the way it feels. It's very sleek. It's very speed boot like, but with a leather upper, which is fantastic. So, and it's basically the same construction as one of my favorite football boots of all time, which is the DS Light series. Um, this is a great way to format this. Chris, I, I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, Andrew Palmer, my goats. Pred Absolutes, OG Hypervenom, Battle Pack F50s, Remakes, either one of the Mizuno Morelia, Tiempo 4 through 6, Vapor 13. And lastly, Copa 19 plus and 20 plus, just because I think they're solidified laces boots. That's a great list. Never got a chance to try it. Let's see. Let me go through this. Okay, so never tried Absolutes. OG Hypervenom is a great shout. Battle Pack F50 remakes, great shout. Those are fantastic. And I wore those are game boots and potentially goat boots for me. We'll see. Mizuno Morelia, either one. Twos are my favorite. Tiempo four through six. Yep. Tiempo fours, fives. I never wore sixes because I moved on to something else at that time. But um, and then yeah, I mean Vapor 13. That's a great shout, too. The knit, again, we as we talked about with Furons. It's basically a better version of a Furon with a Nike swoosh on it. So very cool. Uh, okay. And 19 plus and 20 plus, I would say, yeah, yeah. They solidified those in the speed flow pluses, in my opinion, speed flow pluses, in my opinion, were like, holy hell, these are good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Kai says Mizuno Morelia two made in Japan reach beyond pack has to be my goat boot. Oh, we can talk about colorway now. Reach beyond pack. Mizuno. Okay. Reach beyond. Oh, okay. So the blue, white with the red. Those are very cool. All right. Those are a couple generations ago, I think, or a couple like um, 
versions ago. Yeah, if you guys look up, I don't have any photos right here, but they are, those are, that's a sick colorway. So I wish I could bring this up on screen, but whatever. Um, yeah, those are very, very cool. Reach beyond. Maybe I can share my screen. Oh yeah, here we go. Let's do this. Let's try to share screen. Screen one, share. Oh, that's sad. Okay, I can't share. Bummer. Whatever. Great shout. Those are a really. I'm watch. I'm looking at a pair right now. Reach Beyond Pack, made in Japan, Mizuno Morelia twos. Sick, sick. Those are very cool. So now, because what I want to do is I want to go back to. Uh, does I'm just gonna make one actually. Does color come into play with a goat list? Okay, does color come into we're gonna talk about this for a little bit. So, does color come into play? There are certain football boots I think that are a yes for this, certain boots that I would say no, that's not the case for something like this that for me is a goat boot it only came in one colorway because it was an homage to the old 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 like r9s or whatever they were the t90s of way back way back way back so the colorway like we we didn't have a choice so in my opinion yes like this this counts as one of those things like does color come into play i guess so because it's the only colorway of this football boot for a football boot like this, though, I don't think so. Because Tiempo 5 had a, a bunch of different really amazing colorways, right? Um, I think the colorway, the color question of this whole, like, does color come into play in a goat list outside of the definitions that I've already put together, right? So does colorway come into this goat definition or these goat definitions? Is that something that matters i think that's a subjective thing i don't think that's like objectively this boot changed the game forever i think it's one it was it's one of those things like there are certain colorways that really matter there are certain colorways that are iconic magista obra one in that yellow world cup colorway um r9 in silver r9 with the silver and the blue swooshes or like whatever you call those waves um you could argue like Hypervenom one, but either in the launch colorway or in the the gold Neymar colorway for the World Cup, like those are like iconic football boots. So color makes a difference, yes, um, but I don't think it makes enough of a difference to be part of the definition of a goat boot unless it were to fit in a the category below, which is like a football boot that fits your foot and makes you feel some type of way about yourself and a food that gives a boot that gives you swagger and that you like, like color is such a subject. It's like, what's your favorite color? You know, I don't know. That's, that's kind of my two cents worth about it, but let's move on. Wow. Okay. Where are we going? Here we go. Just uh, curious about the Copa pure point one. Did you also find the toe box very flat? Think they are great game boots, but my big toe kind of really sticks out. Um, not really. I thought it, I thought it was actually a, a pretty wide toe box area. Um, right. Like they're, they're, oop, there we go. They're pretty wide in this area. And then they slim down this, for those of you who are wondering this part of the boot for me is like the widest part of my foot. And those are just fine. I mean, you can see me pushing, right? Like when my feet are in there, it doesn't hurt at all. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, but no, I mean, like, they are pretty low profile here, but I didn't find them to be overly like slim, I guess. I would say the the vapor is like slimmer or flatter, I guess. So not really. Mm-hmm. Epic cool. Hey, what do you mean by goat boot and game boot? I just got in. Rewind. Rewind the live or go watch it later. One thing I love is depending on how, how old you are, your appreciation, lack of a better term, for boots can be. Uh yeah. Yeah, Predator Mania. That's a great boot as well. Fantastic. I never wore those because I was I'm too young for that. But yeah, those are those are sick. Manias are amazing. But yes, it, it is true. I mean, goats change. Um, but again, that's for me, that's where that ultra definition, like that 
that front North Star definition of a goat boot is a boot that introduced either introduced or perfected a technology that has changed the game for football boots moving forward. So premium kangaroo leather, knit football boots, synthetic materials, period, right? Like all of these things are where goat status comes in because they've introduced something that has caught on and just spread like wildfire. Average Bean says, I find it a bit hard to really follow the logic on the second piece of goat boot criteria, but not making it, a, it to a game boot. If you feel that swagger, wouldn't you want that during a match? That's a great question. Um, no, for very particular, very like particular boots. So this for me is a goat boot. It performs really, really well, but it doesn't fit perfectly. And so it doesn't make my game boot. So it's only a goat boot, even though I feel incredible when I wear it. Like I feel super saucy and I feel incredible when I wear it, but it just doesn't fit well enough to, to make that like, because I think this one like blends the first and the second definition. So if we go back to the definitions, right? I think it blends both of like, this is a boot for me that comes kind of in between both of these definitions, but it doesn't fit perfectly. So it doesn't make, it's never been a game boot for me. Hopefully that helps. Um, and I need to take this away. Perfect. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. Goat boot for me was the Adidas 11 pro two SL. Oh, uh, I, I, that is a boot that I've been searching for for over a year now. Ever since, um, ever since Charles Halt from Halt's Boots on IG, he's like he's a boot dealer. He was he's a friend of mine. Um, ever since he had been going on and on and on about the 11 Pro, and he let me try on the regular ones. He had, he and I have the same size foot, so um, I tried on his 11 Pros, which I had never worn before. I tried them on last like not even a year ago and was blown away by the quality of the football boot and just the way it felt. And then I looked up like what the two SL was. And I was like, I knew they existed, obviously, like I saw them and I had teammates with them, but I was like, man, this would be something special. So that's a, that's a good shout. Uh, at average green, sometimes just because a boot makes you feel good. Doesn't mean the performance and high intensity matches are there. Yeah, exactly. Goodwill racing also says full leather upper with that 2014 sprint frame. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. That's the OG version of this football boot. Is the it, it's like an all leather upper, but obviously with the sprint frame, not the Carbotex. And that was a sick football boot. That's um, I think Michael's Michael Seven MLC Michael Michael's uh, favorite boot is that one of all time. But the white and yellow, and then he had the white and silver, which is that same. Dragon Dart Slaw says, "I feel like a goat boot is half your opinion and half everyone else's opinion, while a game boot is a hundred percent your opinion." It depends on what definition you're going for. I disagree with that, but yeah, I mean, I guess so. If you're making your own goat boot list, fair enough. Uh, Tampos have always been great, but Legend 5 was arguably the greatest in my eyes. Classic soul plate, leather with some cool tech, but not overdone. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. I love this football boot so much. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nike Vapor 14 player switch to uh, Nike 14 player switch to Phantom Venom Flynet Ultra thoughts. Um, yeah, I Vapor 14 is pretty slim. So if you fit in Vapor 14, you might find Flynet, uh, you might find the Ultra Venom to be too, like, you might find it to be too wide. What am I trying to say? I'm very tired. Okay. Yeah. You might find it to be too wide. So in my opinion, eh, I guess like you could, I mean, there's no reason not to, but I just think the, the silos are very different, very, very different. So just be aware that you might have to like either size half down just to get the, like enough width. So you, it'll stretch out or you just go with the vapor 15, which is the next iteration of that. The four, four, two needs more people to buy it, to enter the conversation. I'd say that's fair enough. I'd say that's fair enough. What would you say is the best leather football? Uh, what would you say the best leather football boot is in the past year, including specials? Uh, without a question. Well, okay. Mm. 
for my foot, if, if you're just talking like the best leather football boot that came out, these ones. But which one am I wearing more? DS Lite X Fly Series. X Fly 5 came out this year, like recently, recently. And they're so good. They're so good. So comfortable. They flow with your foot really well. They're they're amazing. Do you see yourself wearing the Copa Pures over the Tampa Legend 9s in game? Yes, absolutely. No Phantom Venom up there. It was such a good quality boot. Um, yeah, uh, it's not even close to my GOAT list, though. I just, like, Hyper Venom Phantom 3 is better in pretty much every way, in my opinion. In fact, every way, I think. Feel, touch, comfort, heel area. Soul Plate sucked on Phantom Venom, in my opinion. It was way too flimsy, and it was kind of meh. Um, yeah. But it, I know a lot of people who loved it. So fair enough. Genuine question. Genuine answer. I'll try. How is the Ultra Venom a goat when it came bef just before the GX, but you said GX can't be a goat yet? Great question. So the reason is because the same technology exists in these two boots. It's the same shit. Same shit. This has these little pods right there on the upper. That's the same as the stripes that were originally in Vapor 11, as you know. The knit is the exact same, but for me, the shape of this football boot fits better than the shape of this football boot. And it's on Hyper Venom. So for me, this is all the technology of, of this boot, which some people would consider the greatest Nike football boot ever created. Same stuff, but it fits me and it fits wide-footed players. So for me, that's why I put these together in the same category. The, the Ultra Series from Nike is a, is a GOAT football boot. These are above these ones, in my opinion, because they fit my foot the best and they make me feel some type of way. Uh, Andrew Pong, good question. Uh, hi, it's me. For someone uh, used to play street football and now uh, when playing professionally can't get used to dribbling with studs, which boot would you recommend? Okay, so you went from street football to pro. Wow. Nice. Um, but you can't get used to playing with studs. I have more questions than I have answers for you. I would say start with an AG soul plate, go slow, then build up into FG. If you have the ability to start with AG. I reinforcement says goat boot is Rebula three. Never got a chance to try those, but I, yeah, I mean, sick they were they were they looked amazing one legend four great boot two vapor 11 great boot three regular three wait so you just said goat boot is regular three why is number one whatever number four phantom venom and then four or five hyper venom one that's a good list uh i am extremely happy with the adler's ty for the youtube video i don't know what that means but okay adler's a great brand they're super cool adidas f50 2014 nice vapor 14 i'm not a fan and i don't think it's as good as vapor 15 but great boot cool nice phantom venom ultra fly knit yes adidas x pure chaos wow that's an interesting one and nike magista very cool Okay. Don't know about Pure Chaos, but the rest of those boots, I'm... Oh, yeah. And Vapor 14. Pure Chaos and 14, I'm like, eh. The rest of those boots, class. Class. Top five. Superfly 6, CR7. Superfly 9, Phantom GX. Superfly 8, and Copa. Ooh, wow. Superfly guy. Do you think? Okay. Adidas Predator Mania. Nike T90 Laser 4s. Euro. Yeah. 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 Yes. Those are after my own heart. Oh, that is the best colorway. Those were my, those are like one of my favorite boots of all time. So sick. I wore those way back in, what was I in? Sophomore year in high school? Freshman year in high school? Yeah. Sophomore year, 2012. Three, Adidas Predator Instinct Crazy Light. Sick. Tiempo Legend 9, made in Montebelluna. Made in Italy. Yes. Phantom, Hyperventum Phantom 3 Tech Craft. Nice. Sick. Great list. 
Uh, okay, go for accuracy point one, Copa Pure point one, or Speed Portal point one. Yo, those are wildly different football boots, so I don't know if I can help you. You're going to have to tell – like it's all going to defend, depend on your foot shape and what you're looking for. Those are massively different football boots. Oh, Speed Portal though, which reminds me. This is an update. This is a Speed Portal Plus with laces. I poked holes in it, and I'm now – so the one downside <laughs> is I was using a knife, and I absolutely shredded the upper. Look at this. I've poked a hole, so it's the biggest lace hole you've ever seen, but it still actually works pretty well. And the lockdown is substantially better than when it didn't have laces. And what I did was I, let's see if I can tie the laces tight really quick. Um, just to, just to show you like what it looks like. It actually looks pretty good. Like it looks like a regular speed portal. Um, I've just put laces in it. Here we go. And I've made them a little bit deeper so that the lacing system is, there we go. All right, so that's what the boot looks like. There we go. So that's what the boot looks like. So I've made the lacing system a little bit deeper so that it kind of really brings your foot and grips like that. And then there's that total shithole that I did right here. But pretty sick. Pretty, pretty sick. The non-carbon sole plate. Boo, Adidas. But these are these are very good. I would say that these blow Speed Portal Point One out of the out of the water. Uh, Speed Portal Plus with the laces in them. A one sauce, baby. A one sauce. Okay, accuracy point one. That's a good shout. Adidas F fifty remake and original. Nice. Adidas Eleven Pro. Yes, great boot. Hypervenom Phantom One. Nice. Tiempo Legend Four. Nice. Copa Mundial. That's a great list. I don't think anyone could argue with any of those, honestly. Like, I don't think anyone could argue with any of those boots on the list, other than saying, like, okay, I like Tiempo 5 over Tiempo 4. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, top five, in order. One, Vapor 11. Two, Audi Zero F50. Three, Hyper Venom 1. Four, Superfly 4. Five, Tiempo Legend 7. Mm, interesting. Football boots at their prime, 2014 to 17. Okay. That's a great list. Vapor 11, I would say, is widely considered the best vapor of all time. Like, for the most part, I mean, some, if you were to say like goat vapor, okay, like R9, you know, the original one, but like Vapor 11, I think, was the best, it was like the best generation of synthetic vapor for sure, for sure. Um, F50 is always class, Hypervenom 1's class, Superfly 4, goat, because it introduced Flyknit and Flywire, at, and Carbon Bottom. It had, like, everything. Tiempo Legend 7, good. I prefer different ones, and I would argue not the 7, but that's a great list. Okay, Adidas F50 Pink and Blue. Yeah, Cotton Candies. Uh, X18.1 White and Blue. Okay, those are actually super popular, and they're going way up in price. Way up in price on the resale market. X Pure Chaos Red. Uh, I don't know about that one. Nike Vapor 14 Dream Speed. Really dope looking football boot. Vapor 14 is not a goat for me. Nike Phantom Ultra Venom Flyknit. Nice. That's a great, that's a good, that's a pretty good list. Pretty good list. Seven out of ten. Six out of ten. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Average bean. Tampa Legend 4. Superfly 4. Magista Obra. I assume Magista Obra won. Phantom Venom. Eh. Made in Italy Tiempo 9. Nice. Uh, about to receive Morelia 2s, though. Morelia 2s are goats. They're sick. Sick. Mizuno's Copas or Asics for leather? Mm, well, Copas are no longer... I mean, okay, fair enough. If you're talking like... Uh, if you're talking Copa Mundial, like OG OG... Who can go wrong with those, right? Like those are the classics. They're you know they're they're kind of uh, old people shoes. I don't know. <laughs> they're not very responsive, but they're cool. They're really cool and they're classic. But I would say if you want the highest quality leather, Mizuno first, A6 second, Copa's third. What what's a modern football boot that fits like Phantom Venoms? Um, GXs are pretty close. And Furons are actually pretty close. The way that the lacing system is on the lateral side of the boot, 
is is it makes it feel kind of like Phantom Venom, and they fit really close to the foot like Phantom Venom did. Uh, Horenzo one month review, and what's better, Horenzo or A6D a slight F5? Horenzo one month review will be coming out. I've got it right here. I will be filming Horenzo um, July 6th. So after July, uh, excuse me, July 2nd. So after July 2nd is when you'll see the Horenzo. I'll start filming the Horenzo one month review because I've only had it for a week. Um, and then by that point, after July 2nd, then you'll start to see stuff about it and I'll release it after that point. Horenzo or A6DS Lite X55. Depends on what you're going for. I prefer the DS Lite XY5. That's what I'm going to wear in games way over a Horenzo. Um, but the Horenzo is a beautiful football boot. It's so comfortable, super lightweight, very barefoot-like. It's it's pretty sick. Launch colorway of Copa Pure Point 1 had a super shallow toe box, but later colors fixed it. Huh. Interesting shout. I haven't tried the, uh, the other ones, so fair enough. Um, let's see. Just bought A6DS Lite or XFly because of your video. Thanks a lot. You're so welcome. My best game boot was Tiempo 8 Legend Elite IDKY, but served me extremely well for four years, even with COVID. Yeah, Tiempo Legend 8 was a cool football boot. It was a little overdone, in my opinion, with all those with the um, the quad fit system in the midfoot. But as far as performance goes from a Tiempo perspective, I don't think we'd seen that type of tech since. Tiempo Legend 4 Elite with the carbon and the flywire cables. Um, curious about the shipping time for the DS Lite XFly 5. So DS Lite XFly 5, if you buy them from the link in the description of my videos, which is I'm not sponsored by them. It's just a link that I gave you guys through eBay. Um, those, are, those are boots that take about a week, sometimes a little bit longer to get there. Uh, but I would say really like no longer than something you would buy from Europe, right? Mizuno Morelia 2 is a goaded boot, but how would you compare it to the Morelia Ultralight? I managed to bag a pair of the Ultralight version um, when it came out. That's so sick. I want the gold, especially the gold ones I think you're talking about. I would love a pair of the, the Ultralights. I, I would love to find a pair. They're just, they're almost impossible to find now. Um I think Morelia 2 is goaded over the Ultralight because Ultralight is a special edition colorway and also like it's super, super rare. So for me, because it's not as widely available, like it, it was less available than like Flynet Ultra and Ultra Venom. And so for me, like, I don't know, but maybe, maybe it could be just because it's like the, pro it's like the best version of that boot of yet. Um, okay. Instagram is your best chance. Um, thank you, boomer. Oh, I'm not a boomer. I'm like on the tail end of millennial, I think, or the first part of, no, tail end of millennial. <laughs> I'm only 27. <laughs> uh, okay. But thank you. Thank you. Got it. TY. See, I don't do the text. I, every one of my texts is full length. I speak in full words. Damn. Uh, have you heard of Yasuda football boots from Japan? Do you think you will do a review? Uh, let me look them up really quick. Yasuda. Uh, Yasuda. Oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Um, I have not tried these, but I've been, ooh, these look pretty cool. Um, the Liga Restas, Liga Restas, Liga Restas, they look pretty comfortable. So maybe I will try and get a pair and review them. Um, yeah, those look pretty cool. Maybe I'll get them in red. They're made from cowhide pigskin double structure. Wow. Holy hell. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe. Thank you. That's a great shout. Um, let's see. Thoughts on uh, thoughts switching from Mizuno Morelia Neo 3 Beta Elite Firm Ground to Phantom Elite Size 7. Okay. 
whoa. From a sizing perspective, I think if both of those football boots fit you, then both of those football boots fit you. It's not a big deal. Um, GX fits true to size. Neo 3 and Neo 3 Beta fit a half size down. So I would actually go the opposite direction. So for me, if I were to, if I was wearing a 7.5 EU in Neo 3 Beta, I would wear a 7, or I would wear an 8, not a 7, in GX. Can you compare about Speed Portal, F, Firm Ground, and AG? Thanks from Thailand. Hey, welcome. Let's see. Uh, I would say Speed Portal, Firm Ground, and AG are super similar. I haven't tried the AG model on, like, I've tried them on on feet, and the stud pattern's very, very similar. They're just shorter and smaller studs. So I think you'd be, I think you'd be fine with either, honestly. Um but the FG version is perfectly suitable for most situations. Uh, Andrew Palmer says Amazon hole punch with a screwdriver talking about the speed portal. Um, yes, but I didn't have the patience. So I used a knife and the rest of them were fine. The rest of them were fine. Funny enough. I actually used a knife and a chopstick to poke a hole in, not a screwdriver because <laughs> I don't have a screwdriver here. I just played today with speed portal pluses with laces and they did fantastic. And I've been using them since November. Love that. Um, okay. Where would you rank Phantom Ultras in your favorite boots of all time? Stay tuned for the video. Phantom Luna review is coming soon. Yes. Um, let's see. John Lee says Copa Pure point one versus Puma Future Ultimate versus X nineteen point one. All of them FG. Which one would you pick? Um, Future Ultimate. Mm, maybe Copa Pure. No, mm, mm, mm. no Future Ultimate. Future Ultimate. That's what I'm picking. Um, and. Oh, really quick. For those of you asking about the uh, Yasuda boots, um, this is a good thing. So what I hear, they're true to size, but just in case you're really interested, that's awesome. So if you are going to, if you are going to go with a Yasuda boot, make sure you go true to size. It sounds like, obviously I will try and review a pair, but yeah, that's, that's what I would assume. Um, would the Predator Edge shut the hell up? Oh my God. You're deleted from the chat, poet Anderson. Get out of here. <laughs> Edge plus get away from me. For someone who moved to the street football to professional. Okay. We've answered that already. You're a pro footballer from street football. Really? <laughs> Knife and chopsticks. Nice. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, my official goats are the Nike Superfly twos. Ooh, fun fact. I'm getting a pair. Superfly. Are they Superfly 2s? Nike Vapor Superfly 2. Um, yes. I think I'm getting Superfly 2s or Superfly 3s. I managed to get a pair of the CR7 Safari, Safari Superflies. So... Um, <laughs> Andrew Palmer. Okay, so this is this is funny because these people have been Poet Anderson and Andrew Palmer. We're, we've been talking about these for a long time, but Predator Edge is the goat of all time worst boots. I think, I think, yeah. As far as like initial fit and feel out of the box, they are so bad. They are so bad. Like, oh god. RIP to anyone's feet who wear the, wears those. Um, okay. Last couple, and then we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Appreciate you guys all for being here. Bruce Ortiz says, how durable are X Speed Portal 99 leather? Um, I think they are actually sensational on durability. So this is with lots and lots and lots of wear time. I have worn these all over the place. FG, AG. I've beaten the crap out of the... Uh, See the leather on the on the toe. Focus. Thank you. 
there you go. So it's, I mean, these are, these are really beat to hell and they have stayed really, really nice. Honestly, the leather's still super nice, The there's no separation except for like right here on just a little area. Um, but for the most part, really, really nice football boot, very, very durable. So would recommend if you're looking for like a very durable football boot, I would definitely say, um, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I think we're going to wrap it up there, guys. I appreciate you all for being here again. Thank you for the support. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will be seeing you guys later this week. Lots of cool content coming up. Um, if you've made it to the end, a sneak peek at what's coming out this week. So we have tomorrow the high top of the De Bruyne like orange crazy flame colorway of the GX is coming out. That review. The review for the Tiempo Legend 5 Elites, this one, is coming out on Tuesday. And then I think on Wednesday or Thursday, I'm going to do a live and then I'll probably do a training set. Oh, a game analysis will come out as well this week. So you guys will have a very, very full week of, uh, of videos and it'll be fantastic. So thank you guys all again for joining me for this live session. Hit that like button, share with friends. If you guys have, um, if you guys have people you want to see this, that would be amazing. Shares really help as well. And yeah. Thank you all for coming. As always, be awesome. Take care. I'll see y'all in the next video.